How did you like it? Please let me know in the comments. First off, I have to tell you that I am a huge specialty coffee geek and fan. I love that. I'm not drinking any other coffee. I'm always looking for the best coffee places, specialty coffee places. And here in Hungary, where I'm from, Balázsi Peti, who is uh, like the father who, who brought specialty culture to Hungary, uh, is actually a friend of mine. And I had this idea to shoot a very creamy B-roll, a coffee B-roll for a few years now, but I'm glad that I haven't till now because on the other hand, why it is super exciting is that I had the probe lens and right off the bat, when I had the problems, I knew that I want to create the coffee B-roll right now. I knew what kind of uh, tricks I wanted to do with it and that was just the time. And the timing was great because uh, Peter opened his uh, new coffee shop called Coffeeverse. If you are in Budapest, make sure to check that out and also My Little Melbourne. So that's where we shot. I love the design and the atmosphere of the place. It has a wooden design, but also an industrial look with the coffee machine. So I will talk about what gear I use, how I did several shots, uh, how I approach the sound effect and the coloring and the seamless transitions. So we're gonna cover everything, but first let's roll the intro. The way I'm gonna guide you through this behind the scenes is that first I'm gonna tell you about the shot and I will uh, talk about my uh, idea, how I approached it, and uh, then I will show the behind the scenes, like how I shot it actually, then you're gonna see the raw footage, then the edited footage with speed ramps and the sound effects, but without color correction, and then you're gonna see the end result. So first, let me walk you through what gear I used and how I set up the scene. In two days, coffee making behind the scene B-roll BTS video. I'm gonna show you around and guide you through how I tape everything. So first let's start with the set. I have a giant softbox and since we have plenty of sunlight coming from outside, I just uh, supplement it a little bit and I have the slider here for the establishing shot. The end shot will be here. I really love this texture, but we have a long way to go until we arrive to the last shot. And what I also want to show you is that here I'm using the Sokani X60, which just gives a nice accent light here and we're gonna use it for other shots as well. Let's get started. The establishing shot. The establishing shot is very important. This is what sets the mood. It will tell the viewer that probably what's gonna happen. And since as I told that I really love the, the industrial and uh, wooden design of the place. I wanted to, to emphasize it and show it, but in a way that it will set the tone and set up the next shot, which is grabbing the coffee. And uh, in order to do so, I used the slider. I was doing just a pen movement from left to right, actually a track movement, sorry about that. And I knew that I'm gonna have a left to right movement with the next shot, but I also wanted uh, to show the depth of and the movement and, and the pace of it. So I knew that I'm gonna use a zoom in transition. And this is how I set up the shot. Let me show you the behind the scenes and also what the end result is. Fordulhatsz is arra a gép felé egy picit. Aha, így, jó, és mehet. Oké, okay. még egyszer vegyük, mehet. In the next shot, Dominic is grabbing the coffee bean bag. I knew that what I wanted to do with it and what kind of movements we're gonna do. And this is why I went handheld, I went old school and I used manual focus. I used the 24 1.4 GM and it was really hard. We had to do a lot of retakes because we had to nail the movement, the focus and everything. And one thing I want to point out that after he grabbed the bag, I told the barista Dominic that you should 
get as close to my lens as we are moving as possible because this will allow me in the edit, in the post-processing to have the seamless transition. So let's see how we did that. My hat. Thank you. From the shot that you just saw, we went into the coffee bag with opening it and looking inside the beans. And with that, we use the probe lens. But it's a little secret that I'm gonna share with you. We shot this at the end of the day because I didn't want to mess around with the lights and the reassemble and change the lenses and everything. So we shot everything with the 24 GM and at the end, we shot all the shots with the probe lens. So with this, there are quite a few interesting uh, behind the scene tricks that we use. So of course, when you wanna open a, a coffee bean bag, you cannot open it in a very nice, uh, seamless way as we showed it in the video. We tried it, but it was a disaster. So then I switched the, the angle from a little bit above to down and we put back the part that we, that we peeled off. And I wanted to show an angle where you as a viewer you don't see that it is already open and playing with the speed ramps, I think I could nail that. So that was one shot. And then the next shot is inside the bag and I wanted to show the coffee beans. I think it's a unique shot. We have to leverage the possibilities that the probe lens provides us. It's really cool that it has an LED ring light uh, inside because this way we could light up and have a really low ISO uh, within the bag. And as you could see, I think the end result is pretty awesome, but let me know if you think otherwise or if you like it under the like button, you can show it to me with a like or drop in a comment. But anyways, with the transition, it was actually quite challenging. So it's not only a seamless transition with like uh, what is uh, in focus or what is blurry and with the zoom in, zoom out, we could do that. But I also wanted to play with the color and the light and the darkness. So the first shot become very overexposed because I went really close to Dominic's hand. And the second shot is underexposed because I'm inside the bag and there is just that ring light on the probe lens. So during the transition, I used keyframes. Keyframes basically are markers where you can tell that at this point, I want to have this adjustment. And as you move along the timeline, you can change that and do those adjustments change as well. So from the first shot when that became overexposed, I took down the exposure so it became darker. And for the next shot, which was too dark, I overexposed it just for the transition and then it arrived to the right exposure. And this way the transition is not only like a blurred zoom in, zoom out, but also the, the, the color and the exposure of the cl two clips are aligned. So let's check it out. The next part of the story is to take the coffee arm to the grinder. Of course, we could have like a hard cut and I show that, okay, here is the coffee arm, here is the grinder, we take it out, we take it in. But since the machine and the design is so great, I thought about an orbiting seamless transition and I also went uh, uh, handheld and old school. So this way I was orbiting already and uh, we nailed the timing with the barista that how he takes out the coffee arm, I will go behind the, the coffee machine and actually use the coffee machine as a foreground. Using a foreground is really important, especially if you wanna do these seamless transitions. So this way, as I was going in, you could see in the next shot or you could feel that actually the grinder is behind the coffee machine, but that's not the case. It is actually next to it. So we switch the lights, we switch the angle. And then from the other side, I used actually the, the mount and the, the tripod of the light as a foreground. And this is how I went out. And in the post-process editing, I masked 
out the next shot and this is how it become very seamless and then we could show that how the how the coffee arm ended up in the grinder and then actually I used some hard cut but now let's see how I shot it. The next two following shots will be a seamless transition in mind because uh, we are using here how we take out the handle and I will come here and I will go around the other way. Hopefully it will work. The next shot seems pretty easy. We have the coffee arm, the coffee is already in it, so we just have to attach it to the espresso machine. So for that I used the slider and it was just a forward movement. I set the 24 GM to manual. So by the time I got to everything that is focused, Dominic the barista put the coffee arm back and that's, and that's exactly what was in focus. In theory, but we had to do a lot of three takes. I think we did like uh, 25, 30 takes because it's really hard to nail the movement, the pace, the focus, everything. But at the end result, I think was uh, pretty good. Let's check it out. When it comes to the storytelling of an espresso-based uh, coffee, I think one of the most important things is that you have to show the high quality of the espresso and uh, the, the professionalism and how it is made, how the coffee is pouring out of the espresso machine. So for that, I wanted to use the 24GM and the problems as well, so I use the 24 GM to have some sort of establishing shot for that and the problems was used for showing the macro perspective the 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 texture and the flow of the the coffee and i really loved in the shots that there is some steam coming up and since i'm using the sony a7s3 i could uh, shoot in 4k 100 fps so i could actually slow it down to like 20 25 percent and this is the end result what we got. So, so I use these two lenses, but the problem starts at uh, 14 aperture and the GM is 1.4. So even though I use the same lighting setup, I was using the Sokani X60 as a spotlight. And for the problems, I also had the Nanlite Pavotov 6C2 as an over accent light to really, really show the details of the, the coffee we had to set it in a different uh, way because the 24 GM can let in a lot of light. So uh, the Sokani was around like 20, 25%. But for the problems, I had to go all in 100%. And with the, the Nan light, we had to set and actually hold it in a hand in a way that with the metal knobs, they don't have a, a very harsh reflection of the light. I think we could manage it. So let's check it out. The next shot is that I want to have a close-up with the 24 GM of the coffee, the espresso di dipping, dripping. So that's why I have it here. I'm using uh, the Sokani close by and I'm gonna use the nan light as well to be close and have it evenly lit. Hopefully it will work. Okay. Do you remember that at the beginning of the video I told you that there was one particular shot that I had in mind with the coffee making at the problems. So that's the next shot when we are doing a top-down view and uh, first we saw the coffee dripping into the mug and the next shot is that we have the milk can and the milk is pouring in and the seamless transition is that we go into the mug and then come out from the, the milk can. 
And why I had it in mind with the problems, because the, the front part of the problems is actually liquid resistance. So we could pour the milk and the coffee around the, around the lens or around the tube of the lens. And also I could slide it in the, the mug and the can. And this is how we arrived in a transition, which is quite amazing because you zoom in to the coffee and then you zoom out from the milk with the same shot. And since the shot that you saw previously, it was the dripping of the coffee. It makes sense that in the next shot, we are showing that uh, the coffee actually drips in a mug. One thing I want to highlight is in the post editing process. Since the coffee is black and the milk is white, what a surprise. I had to adjust the colors the same way as I told you with the opening part and the inside of the coffee being bag. So when I zoomed into the coffee, I went for the from the correct uh, exposure to overexposed. And with the milk, since it's white, I went to underexposed. And with the transition, I arrived to the correct exposure. And this is how we could do these seamless transitions. Let's check it out how I shot it and what the end result is. But before that, I forgot to tell you that, as you saw in the video, I love speed ramps. I use them all the time. But in this particular case, what was uh, difficult that I wanted to show the drops and this is where I wanted to slow the clip down as much as possible. But since there was a transition uh, out of the milk can, I already had, had to have milk inside the can because then it wouldn't make any sense. So we actually reshot that uh, clip and uh, we went a little bit higher and we, we poured the milk in a really fast paced way. So this way, even though when I'm coming out of the milk and there is already milk, there are still waves and some other drops. And this is how we could end up with the result. Now, really, let's check it out. The ending shot has an interesting story because first I really wanted to emphasize the atmosphere, the design, the minimalistic design of the place with the wood, with the industrial equipment. But the way we shot it, I think it looks amazing. Actually, I slide it in reverse. And as I was sliding first with the shallow depth of field, I could show the coffee bean back of the roastery. And as I was sliding, Dominic, the barista, put down the coffee and that's what uh, come into focus. In post, actually, I added some steam on the top of it. And as a design, we used the a huge softbox to complement the daylight coming uh, from the huge windows. But from the back as an accent, uh, we used the Soconi with the cone and that drew a really nice light path. And as a design, I used the foreground, one of their signature cakes. And also like this is the most typical and overused idea I know, but we spread some coffee beans around. And I love how this shot looks. But the problem is that the whole movie, the whole B-roll is about the coffee. And in this shot, the coffee is not that relevant. That's not the center of the attention. And I didn't really like it. And when I was talking with Peter, the client, he said that he loves everything. He was a little bit shy at first to tell me that the last shot is not what it's supposed to be. Because when you think about this whole new wave specialty coffee movement, it's minimal. And this uh, coffee bean design is so overused everywhere. So honestly, this was the part where I was really happy that we could have an honest discussion with my client because as it turns out, he had a problem from a different uh, angle, from a professional, from an industry perspective level with the same shot that I didn't think that could fit in the story and the message that we want to deliver. So actually I ended up uh, reshooting the final scene, but more on that later, I want to show you the behind the scenes of the first take of the ending uh, establishing shot. We are all set for the ending hero shot. There is the slider, the large softbox, 
and there is a spotlight and it creates this very nice path. Let's see how it is. So we needed something else. Talking about minimalism that I am a huge fan of, we figured that why don't we do a top-down view since we already had top-down views in the video and uh, the, they have these small, nice white coffee tables and why don't we put the coffee in the middle and uh, I would be just spinning around and uh, then we could use speed ramps and we could show that what espresso-based milk coffee drinks we can create. So there is the espresso, the cortado, the cappuccino and the latte. And uh, I would spin them and then there is a speed ramp and this is how they would change. Great, how do I shoot it? First, I needed a top-down view that can rotate. So I have a Manfrotto tripod that I can use the, the, the main part, not only in vertical, but also horizontal. And I attach to that my uh, DJI RSC2. And since it has this portrait mode, so basically you can rotate it with a, a 90 degree angle and you add up one of the features of the, the RSC2, which is a roll 360 angle, but with this rotation and using it in a horizontal mode, you end up getting a 360 top-down roll view. Actually, that's what I thought. But the problem is that even though I love the RFC2, it doesn't work the way, or actually in this scenario, it didn't work the way I wanted it to work because it wasn't that precise. It wasn't in the center. When I started to rotate it, it orbited a little bit out and I saw that uh, in the control monitor, I saw that the, the, the subject, the coffee, was spinning around and it wasn't in the perfect circle. So I figured I, I'm still going to do that but, and uh, try to track it in post and uh, stabilize it to one point. It didn't work. But since I, I already thought about future proofing this, I did like a very static shot from a little bit uh, above, so I have more space. And I figured if the first idea doesn't work, I will just do it in post. Basically, what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to rotate it in post and add some effects. And this is actually what I ended up doing. The funny thing is that since I needed more space, I needed, I needed to use this kaleidoscope effect. And it ended up with a result that I didn't even expect that uh, I had some mirroring effect around the coffee and the coffee was showing on the edge of the, the, edge of the, the screen and actually I loved it. So what I did, I maxed out the main part and uh, I inverted it and I overexposed it. So the main coffee that is spinning now in a perfect circle is in the main focus, but you can also see the mirroring effects in a shaded uh, way on top of the white. And this is how I did the seamless transitions with some motion blurs. And actually another thing that I did with them that I downloaded an abstract uh, triangle zoom in effect from Storyblocks. I used its alpha channel. I set the, the view to add and I put the opacity around like 10. And it was also giving this minimalistic view, a little twist, a little spice. And this is the end result that we, we could create. And since I knew that the end clip, the, the hero shot now at the end was uh, white, I needed something at, before the establishing shot that is also white. Luckily, uh, the entrance of the, of the coffee shop, uh, next to the entrance actually, there is this huge white wall and the, the name of the coffee shop, Coffee Works, is printed on it. So I figured it could be a, a good punch to have like a really, really fast showing uh, of, the, of the place, of the outside of the place, the exterior, like palm, palm. And this is now how I started the clip. Maybe it grabs the attention even better. And since it's white and now the end establishing shot is white as well, it kind of goes around in a full circle.
So how did you like it? I think this is such a comprehensive review. I wanted to show you the idea, the brainstorming, the behind the scenes, the editing tips and tricks. But before I say goodbye, I want to show you the entire clip only with sound effects. So let's check that out. What do you think about the sound effects? I have nothing left to say, but thank you for watching. If you are still around, I hope you liked the video. If you didn't, well, thanks for watching anyways, but if you are not subscribed and you are into videography, entrepreneurship, uh, this whole digital creator movement, then make sure that you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well, because I will have way more BTS and tutorial content, but not only that, but also a tech review, but only related to um, uh, videography and more focus put on the, the way that you can use it and incorporate it in your creative workflow. So I hope you see you around. Please leave a comment, let me know what you think, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.